How do you follow up on two of the best Android phones ever made? That's the question for Google to answer with its new Pixel phones, which understandably have an awful lot to live up to. Aside from anything else, these are the flagship devices from the people who make Android. Expectations are high, especially with the super expensive price tags these phones will carry. So the question is, are these the best Android phones of 2017? And the answer is yes and no. I'm Alex from Android Central, and this is our review of the Google Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL. In case you're coming in fresh, let's get the basics out of the way first. Once again, there are two Pixel phones this year, a 5-inch Pixel 2 and a 6-inch Pixel 2 XL. But this time around, it isn't just a case of the XL being a blown up version of its smaller counterpart. The larger second gen Pixel has a tall 18x9 screen, like LG's V30 and a few other phones, along with rounded corners and curved glass on the display. For the smaller Pixel, it's business as usual around the front with a 16x9 panel and big chunky bezels top and bottom. That means from the front, these two phones look very different. To be blunt, the Pixel 2 XL looks like a phone from the future, whereas the Pixel 2's front face is a relic from the distant, bezel past. Around the back, the look and feel of these two phones is more uniform. The big glass segment up top is back, only a little shorter this time, with a slightly grippier finish than the slippery metal of the old Pixels. They're also a little flatter than before, and chamfer fans will appreciate the sharp edge around the front of the smaller Pixels display. Build quality is solid on both devices, with aluminium shells making the XL in particular feel nice and substantial. Besides that, these are just metal-bodied smartphones, and we all know what that looks and feels like by now. The extra space around the front accommodates dual stereo speakers. The XL has a slight edge in volume and bass, but even the smaller Pixel puts in a good showing here, outperforming just about all bottom-facing cans. So, screens, and uh, strap in because here's where things get a bit controversial. The Pixel 2 has a 1080p AMOLED panel, which is fine considering its size. Daylight visibility is impressive, and while it's not Galaxy Note 8 good, it's a high quality panel that's nice to look at, and one that I have absolutely no complaints with. As for the Pixel 2 XL, well, honestly, the POLED panel is not great. And I couldn't really argue with you if you called it a downgrade from the old Pixel XL's display. The Pixel 2 XL screen is bright and clear, and with a Quad HD Plus resolution, there's plenty of pixels to go around. Everything's fine in that respect, but there are a bunch of what I'll generously call quirks that no reasonable person should expect in such an expensive handset. First of all, the colours are generally dull and washed out looking compared to AMOLED or even high-end LCD. It's particularly noticeable in app icons when you have both phones side by side. Second, there's a visible, distracting, bad-looking colour shift into bluish hues with even the slightest lateral movement. And the shadow-crushing problem that we saw in the LG V30's POLED panel at low brightness levels? Yep, that makes an unwelcome return as well. Now, I don't hate this screen, but the problem is these three main issues are just unacceptable in a phone that sells today for $850 to $950. So there you go, that's the biggest weakness of the Pixel 2 XL. It might seem like a small thing, but remember the screen is the one component you're interacting with every single time you use the phone. Oh, and while I'm at it, neither phone has a headphone jack, so yeah, dongle life from here on out. Google includes an adapter in the box, but it still means you can't use wired headphones while charging, and you need to have this stupid thing waggling on the end of your headphone cable. Sure, Google isn't alone in dropping the 3.5mm jack, but that still doesn't make it anything other than a negative for me. Okay, I promise we're mostly done with the hate at this point. Everything else about these phones is pretty much awesome. They're both packing high-end specs, Snapdragon 835, 4GB of RAM, and 64 128GB of storage. I've been using the 64GB versions of both, and you're looking at 54-ish free after initial setup, more than enough for my needs. Meanwhile, 4GB of RAM still does the job. The only time I've noticed apps being aggressively bumped out of memory is while using the camera. HDR Plus is still a bit of a memory hog. And overall performance has been fantastic, with lightning quick touch responses and buttery smooth animations. Both phones are finely water resistant too, with an IP67 rating. That means you probably won't want to try skimming your Pixel 2 across a lake, but it'll survive a heavy rainstorm or a dunk in the sink without any ill effects. 
The software has long been a defining characteristic for Google branded phones, and there's a decent amount of new stuff to be found on the Pixel 2. The new Pixel UI is built on Android 8.0 Oreo, with all the trimmings you'd expect from the latest version of the OS. In particular, setting up the Pixel 2 for the first time, it was really great to be able to use Autofill with Google to pull in my passwords for things like Twitter and Instagram from details that were already saved in Chrome. You can find out more about what's new in Oreo in our Android 8.0 review. The Pixel Launcher has been spruced up a bit, with the Google search bar down below where it's easier to reach, and a new at a glance section up top showing weather, traffic, or calendar events. Or, if you don't have any plans because you've blocked out a weekend to review a couple of new phones, it'll just show you the date. Meanwhile, there are some beautiful Google Earth Live wallpapers that build on what we saw on the first Pixel phones, 3D views of natural beauty spots from above add a touch of class to your home screen, punctuated by gentle waves, the occasional car, or birds flying overhead. Seriously, it's great that both Samsung and Google have started taking live wallpapers seriously over the past year. Google Assistant is back and now accessible by squeezing the sides of the phone, similar to HTC's Edge Sense. The new Active Edge works exactly as you'd expect, but the extra grip of the metal unibody makes the squeeze gesture easier to pull off on the Pixel than it was on the HTC U11. Was I crying out for yet another way to activate Google Assistant? Probably not, but it's a nice option to have all the same. Google Lens is the big new exciting thing on the Pixel 2 phones, even though it's technically just a preview for Pixel owners right now. You'll find it in Google Photos, and it usually does a decent job of telling you about the thing you've just taken a picture of. It works best with landmarks, movie posters, and artworks, until it suddenly doesn't. If this sounds familiar, it's because we ran into basically the same issue as Samsung's Bixby Vision earlier in the year. Now, Lens isn't anywhere near as useless as Bixby, but it still feels very much like a beta, the main problem being its inability to come up with non-obvious information. There's also the fact that you need to take a photo of whatever you want to look up, which just adds another step between you and the information that you want. Google Lens is promising, and for the record so is Bixby, but neither is a reason to sway your purchasing decision one way or the other right now. Other software goodies include Smart Storage, which technically isn't new, but can be really useful, automatically helping you clear out photos and videos that have already been backed up. And the new Pixels can also identify songs in the background entirely on the device without sending any information to Google. The Pixels have music recognition information for popular and current music, meaning they can proactively show you what's playing on your lock screen or in the notification shade without you having to ask. The Pixel 2 software is sure to get better over the coming months and years. Google promises three years of platform updates, which means you'll be supported all the way through to Android R in 2020. That's a promise that no other Android manufacturer is even coming close to right now, and a big advantage of buying a phone that's made by Google. The first generation Pixels blew us away with their photographic capabilities, with always-on HDR Plus that was able to suck in more colour detail than rival phones, resulting in best-in-class low-light performance and amazing dynamic range. A year on, Google has taken everything we loved about the first Pixel's cameras, dialed it up a notch or two, and added some new features for good measure. But first, the hardware. Both Pixels have 12-megapixel rear cameras with optical image stabilisation behind f1.8 lenses. Around the front, there's a fixed focus 8 megapixel sensor with f2.4 lens. Between the addition of OIS and a brighter lens, and the more powerful processor, the Pixel 2 takes even better photos in really challenging situations where you need a great phone camera, shooting directly into a winter sunset, or at night by streetlight. Just as other cameras were starting to catch up with the first Pixel phones in these kind of shots, Google has raised the stakes even further. The Pixel cameras continue to focus on colour detail more than just sharpness, so it's possible you get sharper looking shots from some rival cameras like the LG V30, but from what I've seen, there's no question that the Pixel 2 is the winner in low light and high contrast shots. I don't put a whole lot of stock in synthetic camera benchmarks like DxO Mark, but it's hard to argue with the Pixel 2's new status as the best smartphone camera. The only thing you'll miss out on is telephoto or wide angle effects given that there is only one rear camera. And what's more, the Pixel's crazy good electronic image stabilisation fuses with OIS to once again bring us eerily smooth 4K video. Seriously, whether you're on a plane, in a car, or just on foot, the Pixel camera beats just about everything when it comes to smoothing out the bumps. So what else is new? Google finally boards the portrait mode bandwagon with the Pixel 2, and manages to do so with only computational photography magic. No second lens here. 
And considering there is only one lens, it's remarkable that the Pixel's portrait mode works as well as it does. We've come away with some really impressive portraits with simulated background blur. And that applies whether you're using the rear or front cameras to take your portraits. The same depth sensing technology can spring into action using the selfie camera as well. Finally, motion photos come to the Pixel 2, recording a short video as you take each photo. It's pretty much a carbon copy of the same feature from the iPhone, or the HTC One M7 if you want to go even further back. It's kinda neat, but I didn't find it captured anything earth-shattering, and after a couple of days I switched it off to save space. So the bottom line for the Pixel 2 cameras? Really, really good. Probably the best single camera smartphone setup I've seen. But yeah, the cost of that is you'll miss out on telephoto and wide angle because there is just one rear camera. With all this photography, image recognition, song identification and high performance hardware going on, you might expect battery life to take a hit, especially considering the mere 2700mAh battery inside the smaller Pixel. But in reality, I've been seriously impressed with the longevity that both phones have been able to deliver. These are still one day phones, the smaller Pixel 2 has been getting me around 15 hours of use with between 4 and 5 hours of screen on time, perhaps less if I really push the camera. For the larger Pixel 2 XL with its 3520mAh battery, you'll maybe be able to squeeze out a couple of extra hours on top of that, but not much more. Regardless, based on my usage patterns, both phones represent small but meaningful upgrades over their predecessors in terms of battery life. And while there's unfortunately no wireless charging built in, a metal-backed phone still makes that really hard, you do get USB power delivery for fast charging, and there's a speedy 18 watt plug included in the box. Let's start to wrap things up here. The Pixel 2, that is the smaller model, is by far the best small Android phone you can buy right now. I would have loved to see the Pixel 2 XL design complete with 3D glass in this smaller form factor. I'm almost certain that's what we'll get next year, but even with its big bezels, which I'll admit do make it look dated, this is a fantastic little phone. Particular praise should go to the truly phenomenal camera and what Google's been able to bring to the Pixel software experience this time around. That same praise applies to the Pixel 2 XL as well, but with one great big ugly asterisk. It's a real shame this phone ships with such a disappointing and frankly flawed P-OLED panel. Again, it's not horrible, it's just not what you should expect from a phone in this price bracket. When you go north of six or $700, you need to nail the fundamentals, and the screen is about as fundamental as you can get. And there are issues with the XL screen that I don't see Google being able to fix in software. So it comes down to this, if you're considering the miniature Pixel 2, then go right ahead. Buy with confidence knowing that you're getting the best small Android phone money can buy. For the Pixel 2 XL, it's a bit more complicated. Go into a store, check out the screen for yourself, see if you can live with its quirks and imperfections. If you can, this phone has a lot to offer. Everything that's great about the Pixel 2's camera and software experience, a more futuristic design, more screen real estate and a bigger battery. But if it's a high quality best in class screen that's your priority, then you'll find the competition has some better alternatives. That's it for now, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss future Android reviews and opinions as they land, and head to androidcentral.com to read our written review of the Pixel 2 phones. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.